Thank you for burrowing out today so that you could be here. Uh, what a blessing to have so many uh, faces and, and family and friends here today uh, as our children help uh, share uh, the message of, of uh, God's gift for us uh, through their program today, The Trees of Christmas. And at the beginning of our service, what we do every year is uh, any children who are studying an instrument or something like that, maybe just started on piano or maybe have been doing it for a while or something like that, they have the opportunity uh, to uh, play some songs for us this morning. So if any of your kids have uh, maybe just started piano this year, uh, keep this in mind for next year. They're always welcome to uh, prepare a song uh, each year to share with us uh, at the beginning of our our program today. So without uh, further ado, we'll begin.
gracious Lord God, we gather together today to reflect on the joy that you sent to earth that first Christmas in the stable in Bethlehem. We thank you for your love. We praise you for your grace and mercy. And we pray that you would fill our hearts with the peace of forgiveness and the joy of knowing we will one day join you in our glorious home above. Use our children and the many trees of Christmas to present your wonderful story of salvation. In the name of our living Lord Jesus, amen. Come on, kids, it's time to get a tree. It's the, it's the time of year when certain trees become very important. For many of us, it begins with spending time wandering through the forest until we find the tree we want to give center stage in our homes. And whether you have a real or an artificial tree, you probably take great time and effort rearranging your furniture, untangling colored lights, hanging precious ornaments, and string glittering tinsel. What would Christmas be without a Christmas tree? It stands on display so proudly, giving off light and beauty. It provides a great place for us to set our wrapped Christmas gifts, and it serves as a shelter for our precious ornaments and nativity sets. This morning, we'll learn about the trees of Christmas. We'll discover that the Christmas tree isn't the only tree of Christmas. There are other trees that show us that God cares for us. They all tell us about God's great love for us and his wonderful gift of life and salvation.
gather around the Christmas tree. Gather around the Christmas tree. Once the pride of the mountainside not cut down to grace our Christmas time. For Christ from heaven to earth came down to gain through death a nobler crown. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Gather around the Christmas tree, gather around the Christmas tree. Every bough hangs with burden low, they are gifts of love for us we know. For Christ is born his love to show the greatest gift to all below. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Let's begin our long journey with a promise foretold. In the Garden of Eden, where sin first took hold, there a life-giving tree played a part in the scene. So let's turn our first truth to a life-giving green. Trees play an important part in many of our favorite Bible stories. Can you imagine how many trees Noah cut down to build the ark? Genesis chapter 6, verse 14. Make yourself an ark out of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. Uh, Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see Jesus. Luke chapter 19, verse 4. So Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Because Jesus helped in the carpenter shop, he knew all about trees. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? Mark chapter 6, verse 3. And Jesus cursed the fig tree that wouldn't grow any figs. Jesus said to the fig tree, may you never bear fruit again. Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. Who can name some trees mentioned in the Bible? But two trees become important right at the beginning of the Bible. There are the, tree, there are the trees God placed in the Garden of Eden. 
Genesis chapter 2, verse 9 says, In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. The first tree was the tree of life. One tree was a good tree from which Adam and Eve were to eat and enjoy. It was named the tree of life. As long as Adam and Eve ate from this tree, they would live forever. The other tree was a dreadful tree called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If Adam and Eve ate from this tree, they would bring death upon themselves. But that's, that's the tree they wanted. And with a bite of its fruits came God's curse and God's promise. With the first sin came the first promise of a savior. The one God promised there, promised here was the same one who was born in Bethlehem. And so God sent Adam and Eve out of the lovely garden for a very good reason. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 22, God said, Man must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. But that's not the last time the Bible speaks about the tree of life. In the book of Revelation, God said we will see the same tree in heaven. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 says, To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. We continue with our next hymn, In Adam We Have All Been One. In Adam we have all been one, one huge rebellious man. We all have fled that evening voice that sought us as we ran. Savior, when we loved you not, you loved and saved us all. Oh, great good shepherd of mankind, now hear us when we call. <clears throat> and that promise continued for many a year, as the Lord still assured them salvation was near. Down from father to son, the word remained true. We remember it now with a color of blue. Do you keep a family tree? Do you know who your ancestors are? Some families keep very detailed family trees. These trees show us our grandparents, great-grandparents, and even our great-great-great-grandparents. Some families have famous people in their family tree. Others can trace their family tree to other countries. The Bible lists Jesus' family tree twice. God told David also from the line of Abraham, oh wait, oh, sorry. The book of Matthew starts by saying, a record of geneal genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Luke chapter three tells us, now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought of Joseph. As this family, 
As this family tree flowed through the years, God's promise of a Savior was kept alive. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God promised Abraham that the blessing of Jesus would come from him, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. When, Abraham, uh, when Abraham's grandson Jacob was about to die, he told his son Judah that Jesus would come from his family. His words are recorded in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs. God told David, also from the line of Abraham, One of your descendants I will place on the throne. Psalm 132, verse 11. This line in Abraham's family tree continued right up to the birth of Jesus, as we learn from Matthew 1. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. We continue with our next hymn, Let the Earth Now Praise the Lord. Time finally came for the promise to show, as the branch of God's tree was now ready to grow in a dark, lonely stall on that first Christmas night. God sent his own son to give the world light. What would it be like if God gave us only one kind of tree to look at? Not very interesting, I imagine. Instead, God gave us a variety of beautiful and fascinating trees. The oak tree stands tall and broad. The pine tree doesn't have any leaves. The palm tree has only a single tall trunk. The willow tree has such long branches that they droop down to the ground. The red mangrove tree looks like all its roots are above the ground, and the bonsai tree is just a tiny tree you grow in a pot. Some trees have roots, some trees have nuts. Some have seeds that fall to the ground, while others are heavy with cones. Did you know that Jesus was once called a tree branch? Several times in the Old Testament, the pictures painted of Jesus sprouting from the stem of David. Zechariah wrote about Jesus, the branch. Tell them this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch. He will be clothed in majesty and will sit and rule on his throne. Zechariah chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. Isaiah wrote about, Isaiah wrote about Jesus, the branch. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. 
Jeremiah wrote about Jesus, the branch. I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15. Jesus was the promised branch who was born in Bethlehem on that first Christmas night so long ago. We continue with our next hymn, Behold, a Branch is Growing.
Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and peace, 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 peace to his people on earth.
As always, uh, offerings may be placed in the offering plates at the back of the sanctuary or the front of the fellowship hall. If you're visiting with us today, you may participate in this offering, but please don't feel obligated to do so. These are first fruits that the people of hope have joyfully set aside to do the Lord's work in this place and all around the world. Today, we lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ in prayer. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you have given to us, especially in your Son, Jesus Christ. You sent him here to be our Savior. And Lord, we cling to him, especially in times of distress. Whether we are going through hardship or joys, he is our firm foundation. Lord, we thank you for bringing our sister in Christ, Violet Wank, home to glory this past week. And now we celebrate that the next time we see her, it will be in glory. Lord, thank you for all the years of grace that you gave to her and the beautiful faith that you created in her heart that reflected you to the world around her. Lord, continue to watch over Laura Muller and Esther Haggard as they struggle with cancer. Be with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are sick and suffering. Strengthen their trust in you. Lord, continue to watch over Tracy Griebler, who has been preparing for radiation treatments in Texas, and will begin them shortly. Lord, we know that you are the great physician of body and soul, and you can do all things. And so we place Tracy in your loving hands. You are good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Strengthen her faith as well. Cause it always to reflect you and your faithful love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The trees are not finished. Another appears. It is carved as a cross and is covered with tears. There, waiting to cover the sins we all dread, God gave us a cloak in the color of red. But Jesus' work on earth only began on Christmas Day. Thirty-three years later, another tree would play an important part in the life of Jesus. This tree had been stripped of its beautiful leaves, the branches were all torn away, and all that was left was a rough beam of wood. It was on this tree that the loving Son of God would be crucified and died. Jesus would be nailed to this tree and suffer and die for all of us. Paul, Paul wrote about this tree in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, Paul wrote, And being found in appearance as men, he humbled himself and become, became obedient to death, even death on a cross. The writer to the Hebrews encourages us in chapter 12. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the, off, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its flames, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And Peter made it very clear when he wrote, He himself bore our 
sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It was on this tree that Jesus finished his work of redemption. Standing in front of this tree, we discover what Christmas is all about. It's about God's love. It's about our Savior, Jesus. It's about washing our sins away. And it's, a, it's about getting heaven ready for us, the home of that beautiful tree of life. What child is this who they to rest on? Mary's lap is sleeping. Who angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our Why lies he in such mean estate where rocks and now are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here the sun. And now that you've told us of trees long ago that have taught us the story we all love and know, we will light up our tree with a glad Christmas cheer and we'll carry that glow throughout the new year. One tree we haven't talked about. Do you know which tree that is? It's our Christmas tree. We see it in our homes and in our church. But where did the tradition of the Christmas tree come from, and what does it mean for us? Some of the history of the modern Christmas tree dates back to Germany in the 1500s. Martin Luther set up a Christmas tree inside his house at Christmas time. Some feel the Christmas tree came from another tree called the Paradise Tree, on which apples were hung. Small candles, glass balls, tinsel, and the Star of Bethlehem were often used to decorate the tree. Regardless of its history, the Christmas tree still holds much symbolism for us today. reminds us of the eternal life Jesus gave to us.
The shape of the Christmas tree points our eyes to heaven, where we one day will be with Jesus. The tree itself reminds us of the tree in the Garden of Eden, where sin began and where God promised us Jesus. The lights on the Christmas tree remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. The tinsel on the Christmas tree reflects the love of Jesus. The ornaments on the Christmas tree remind us of the many blessings God has given us. The gifts under the Christmas tree remind us of the best gift God gave us in the Bethlehem stable. The wood on the Christmas tree reminds us of the Calvary tree. The star on the tree reminds us of the star over Bethlehem. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord in gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Just like 
Thank you, kids. Uh, may a Christmas tree always be a place where we can gather together around to remember our Savior, and not just then, but at all times of the year, too. Uh, you may uh, be seated, and we're going to uh, see a, a, a video quick for our upcoming Candlelight Christmas Eve. And we'll have a few announcements, and then um, our children will stick around up here for uh, a few pictures, if you would like, if you'd like to uh, grab some of those. Um, and then we'll just have a few announcements after that. After thousands of years of waiting and praying, hoping and straying, a very special proclamation was made. It was the very first Christmas sermon, in fact, from an angel to a congregation of shepherds, to be exact. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. Did you notice? Not just a helper or a teacher, not just a mentor or a preacher, but a savior. A savior to earth he came, to free us from hopelessness, guilt, and shame. Now that's a savior worthy of fame. A savior is born. Be our guest this Christmas from all of your friends at Hope. Once again, thank you for being here. A uh, special welcome to all of our visitors today as well, family and friends. Uh, you, you dug out of the snow. You, you, <laughs> you made it here, uh, slipped and slid your way here. So thank you for being here. And thank you to all your parents uh, <coughs> for, for lending us your children for this as well. Um, we're, we're so glad to be able to, to uh, share God's word with you uh, today. Uh, <coughs> there are some... Uh, a little business size card uh, invites that you can take with you. They're on the counter uh, in the fellowship hall there. Uh, if you'd like to invite a friend or family member uh, or neighbor to uh, our candlelight Christmas Eve service and Christmas Day worship as well on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, if you uh, brought a Christmas tree here today, you can see there's lots of awesome Christmas trees here. Uh, today's the day to uh, take the, oh, I'm sorry, I just skipped an announcement right in front of me. Um, today's Christmas caroling, we always, we, we, one of our traditions here is that we go Christmas caroling uh, after our children's Christmas program. And uh, because of uh, uh, needing to, to clean up, we have a, a funeral, uh, Violet Wank's funeral is tomorrow morning, we're preparing for. Um, and just because of the, the snow piles everywhere, making it kind of hard to find places to park and things like that. This year you can just stay put in this parking lot and we're just going to go to... Um, uh, Garden Hills next door. They have two buildings, um, so we'll go to the closest one first and then the next one, and we'll do that uh, at 1030 here, um, and that will be the uh, all of our Christmas caroling uh, today. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, if you did donate a, a tree or if you brought a tree for this service and you'd like to bring it home, today's the day to do that. Um, if you don't uh, bring it home today, we're assuming that you're leaving it here, but we would still uh, like to know 
uh, if it's yours and if you're, if you're donating it. So if you see your tree, you see a, f a, familiar, a familiar tree up here, um, and you'd like to leave it here for us to use in, in other uh, uh, events and stuff like that, um, thank you, but then let us know so that we actually know that it has been uh, donated. That would be uh, helpful. Um, there are, uh, uh, there's a sale going on with Northwestern Publishing House for possible Christmas gifts too. Um, and you might have seen in there also, uh, we do have our uh, calendars for 2023 uh, available in the back as well. Um, and you can uh, give those as a gift too. Um, any other announcements that I might be leaving out today? All right. Oh, yes. Um, times for the funeral should be on your insert in your, uh, your bulletin in your worship folder. So there will be a viewing from 10 to 11 uh, here in the sanctuary for Violet. And then um, the uh, funeral uh, from 11 to maybe about 11.30, 11.45. Lunch will be at noon uh, till about 1. And then uh, the committal uh, will be at the National Cemetery uh, in, out by Sturgis um, at 2 p.m. All right. Again, welcome to uh, all of our guests. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Lord's blessings until next time. <laughs>